The African Movie Academy Awards, popularly known as HAMA, and the HAMA Awards are presented annually to recognize excellence among professionals working in or non-African professionals who have contributed to the African film industry. The 17th edition of the award held in Lagos amid glamour and all the fanfare which characterized the world of make-believe. But beyond that, how much growth has the industry witnessed over the years? What has the what has the journey looked like this past 17 years? The founder and president of the award, Peace Ayamu Sigwe, who is also the president of Association of Movie Producers of Nigeria, is here with us to speak on this, including the plan of the Lagos State Government to keep the award scheme in Lagos for the next three years. She will also be speaking on the 100 movie project of African Film Academy, as well as the challenges of unity, bedeviling Nollywood associations. Good morning, Madam Peace. You're welcome Good to morning. the studio. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're I'm fine. Well, you. I'm sure you're cool now that the 17th edition has come and gone. Yeah. Um, Marriott Lagos <laughs> was the bomb, wasn't it? I'm relieved that we've actually done <laughs> the 17th year. You know, it's um, difficult every year because you start, you don't know how you're going to do it and then you finally do it, and after that you want to collapse, but it's almost like you have to start all over again. Mm. But yes, the 17th year, which, it was a very difficult year for films. You know, we had so many films come in, about 552, and they were very strong films. Um, and the thing also is that f some countries that we never expected to sending films, started sending in films, so we had a lot of representation from North Africa this year. So yes, the awards, um, I, didn't, I didn't envy the jury or the pre-selection committee in any way, so I. <laughs> so the good news mm -hmm. is that uh, the awards will stay in Lagos for the next three years, given what the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, said live on stage. Um, what does that mean? Is this about sponsorship, uh, or is this about um, um, do, do, domiciling? <laughs> AMA in his rightful abode, which is I mean, a lot of people think that, oh, AMA belongs to Bielsa, Yedegua, but then we know that the, the actual home is Lagos. So how do you feel about the governor's announcement? Well, I'll tell you two things that happened that night. First of all, we're not expecting the governor. We'd already started the show. We were, you know, going ahead because the commissioner was already sitting there. And then all of a sudden, I, I gathered that he was coming and I was like, We've already started this show, and we're not going to stop because, you know. And they said, no, he's going to come in. I said, okay. And so I was already on stage talking, and then, so a lot of what happened that night was like a complete surprise to us in terms of planning. Um, and then when he said it was going to stay in Lagos, uh, first of all, there was like r surprise, and then there was absolute relief, because at least you know that you have a partnership understanding for the next few years. And for me also, because there's a team working on AMA now, there's a, a whole coordinated new team that's growing the brand as well. I was quite happy for them because they now have something to plan with. And it gives me less of a job so that I can move on to some other stuff that I really like doing. You know, so yes, we are, excited to be in Lagos. Like everybody knows, um, Nollywood is home to Lagos in a way, and it would be nice to see the brand Lagos also acknowledge the fact of brand Nollywood prop, you know, properly. Right now, a big congratulations, of course, on another, yet another milestone. It's another year in spite of um, the challenges and, that you may have faced uh, during that course. But let's talk about the chronicles of the industry itself. Having been, you're sitting in your 17th year doing this. Let's talk about what it was like, let's say about 10 years ago, and now in terms of the granular details of the challenges of being in this industry. Okay. Nollywood is, uh, even African cinema in general, is growing. But there are still so many issues of acceptance. And it comes from what I would say is understanding our audience. Nollywood is peculiar in terms of its audience and what people like to watch. So we get a lot of criticism at AMA because people tend to say, oh, AMA films, we don't understand them. Why didn't this person win? Why wasn't my film acknowledged? And people fail to see that 
we're actually looking at a cross-section of films from all over Africa and all over the diaspora as well. And what you may find that the Nigerian audience wants to watch is not generally what the world wants to watch. Nigeria has a peculiar audience structure. Our audience is very familiar with our what we like to see, our daily lives. I think we have a, an audience that likes our realities. So that's why you see a lot of the films on the African Magic um, channels, et cetera, that relate to our everyday lives is what people want to see. Whereas the other films that we actually see on AMA that come into AMA are more artistic. So p films like A Yim Affair or The Milkmaid, may not be popular in the cinema culture, but they are definitely films that travel for Africa. And, you know, someone said to me, how come that girl won for the film in Best Actress, and there was Rita, and there's this, and I said, I'm you, I'm <laughs> and you need to watch the films. Now, I personally, I like the people that were nominated, but I can't say who is going to win. But when I did now sit down and start watching some of those films, I didn't envy the jury. And I am so glad that one of the first things I did when we started AMA is totally remove myself from anything to do with the jury process. Yeah. So, so are we right in saying you're giving more representation to the, the newer artistic films as well, as opposed to what lots of people have consumed as the norm for Niger for Nigeria? Um, I think that's the biggest problem AMA has had over the years in acceptance in Nigeria as well, is that we are actually more about the professional side of filmmaking, the quality, the um, structures. I mean, I remember having conversations with jury members once on a particular set of films that, well, I think it's 2012 AMA, there was two films. Um, How to Steal Two Million and Otello Burning. And I like to use this. I'd been on jury service for other film festivals, and that night I was getting excited that maybe Otello Burning was going to win. And then when it was announced, it was How to Steal Two Million. And later on, sitting down with my jury, and I was trying to understand, and then the president of the jury then, Santo, said to me, the story structure was flawed. I said, how? She said, look, when you're telling the story about Africans, you have to do research. This is this, this, and I was, I now understood what their process was. They not only just look at the film for the beauty of it, but they look at but what, how the structure works, and that's why it's the African Movie Academy Awards. It, it's kind of representative of what Africans are about and who we are, telling our own stories in our own words and in our own way, so that people don't just make films and not look at what the real story is. And so when you see a film win at AMA, realize that one, the people who are the final jury are creators of African cinema for not less than 20 to 30 years in the whole structure. They've been in that system for that long. And therefore, they're not just looking at the beauty of the film or just how popular a film is. They're actually looking at how far this film can travel, how far it can tell the story of Africa across the world, and how can it be received across the world. So they carry a burden of making sure those films can tell our story across the world. And one of the things I always say to people is that if a film wins at AMA, be sure to know that it has a long lifespan yeah. in the circuit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, but the, the key thing that a lot of people would need to be reminded about, you know, uh, which you haven't emphasized more, is that AMA is not a Nigerian award thing. It's an African thing. And therefore, you will always find people like, oh, uh, because it's held in Lagos or in Bielsa, how come a Cameroon is picking more of the awards or South Africa or Zimbabwe? You know, it's a, it's a continental thing. But what interesting thing to me, particularly for this year, and last year too, even though that was a COVID year, uh, is the fact that many uh, Netflix original films were also submitted for consideration. Yeah. Uh, my question is not about them coming to AMA. My question is how are you, as the head of the film producers, how are you um, assisting in navigating the sort of uh, contracts 
that are coming, you know, to producers, uh, either via Netflix or we had uh, Amazon Plus, you know, here, for example. And, and people complain that, oh, it, it, it is beginning to look like the, and I'm sorry to say that maybe like the DSTV thing of old, where selected few have been chosen, you know, etc. cetera. Um, you are the president of AMP. Are you in any way involved and, uh, you know, what do you think can be done better? Especially given that this is the time to go for the kill. This is like an alternative for the cinema. Or, Madam Peace, are we saying that the seeming disunity in your industry is a factor, given that, unfortunately, yours is not the only association speaking for the producers. ANCOP, did I get the name right? Called Nollywood Producers is still there. They have even taken the United Census, but to court, for example, how are you dealing with all these vagaries affecting your industry? Well, um, first and foremost, I think the first thing is to accept the fact that the Association of Movie Producers of Nigeria, AMP, is the oldest registered association in the Nigerian film industry. We actually have done our revalidation of membership. We have over 5,000 members in the 36 states of the Federation that we have names, addresses, phone numbers, etc. So we have a database, and I think that's the strongest collated database of producers in Nigeria today. So we, and we speak for, I think, 90% of the people who also now register their films for Netflix, etc. So we have managed to get them on board to actually join the guild. And that probably also happened because of the census board um, directive that for your film to be censored, you must belong to a professional guild. Now, apart from that, we have engaged Netflix as well as all the other um, platforms. And one of the first things we did as a guild is we started to look at master agreements because producers are actually the employers of labor. Yeah. And basically, we started to look at master agreements with the other guilds because we feel that if we can get our housekeeping done, then we can begin to make sure that our producers get what is duly theirs. Because I have the saying that I keep telling the producers, Nigeria is the highest content maker in Africa, mm. but we have the poorest producers. Mm. And that is a big problem for me. Now, we are also our own worst enemy, as in Nollywood people, generally. We tend to backbite ourselves a lot. When these companies come into Nigeria, the same so-called big producers will say, don't talk to the guilds, don't talk to this person, don't talk to that person. And then they always want to, you know, keep these people to themselves. And then it starts to affect everybody else. So you have issues with Netflix or even Amazon or anybody who is doing originals where sometimes we're having problems where some people come in and they get paid for an original. Then the money that is supposed to go to the people and or to the professionals in it are being paid to them and then taken back by the main producer. Mm. And that is a big problem. So why is that happening? And why is Netflix even paying your, you know, your crew members directly? What's going on there? So we've had to start having this engagement, not just with Netflix, but also with our producers. Mm. Professionalize your work so that there will be respect for your production companies in Nigeria. And if you keep running your guilds and associations down, then you will never have somebody that can fight for you. But we are there to engage with the streamers, which we did with Netflix recently. The Census Board had an in, um, interactive session, and we brought up all the matters arising with them, the whole idea that people think it's particular people. But what we find is that Netflix said that they have issues with the quality that we have in terms of quality control. So what I think happened previously was that one of the distribution companies was able to go through the process of cleaning up the films to, in order to meet the Netflix standards, and therefore that seemed to make it look like it was um, 
just the one way going. But now there's a little bit more interaction, and also Netflix has invested in capacity building for a lot of people. And we also, as a guild, have spent the last one year doing just that, capacity building. We did a major training in Asaba, we've done in um, Aqua Ibom, we've done in Kano, and we keep doing that. And that's actually something that I am very passionate about, is that we must professionalize our work so that we will be respected. So, And also, if we cannot get the quality then we cannot be arguing with the platforms. Mm -hmm. We must raise the quality standards and make sure that certain issues are taken care of. Story structure, um, sound, you know, production the whole production garment has to be done properly. And that starts even with the, just the paperwork. And I think that's one of the things that makes a lot of people come into Nigeria and bypass the general filmmakers. And that will stop. Right. As so so what, what would you advise like budding filmmakers and producers? Because of course we talk about quality a lot, which of course is a major prerequisite, or at least a very basic one. But quality is also linked sometimes to the soft infrastructure that they have available to them. Uh, a producer could say, look, I can't afford to do this the $200 million way, but I have this fantastic idea. I'm going to you know, bootstrap this. But of course, it sort of reflects when you see the eventual <laughs> production values. Yeah. What would you say to that producer on how to, to basically not just circumvent, to address these kinds of issues in the future so that they still present you know, the great work that they have? I think one of the first things I always tell producers these days is spend as much time as you can in pre-production. Get your story right. And then make sure you're doing a story that you have a budget for. Don't go aspiring to do a $200 million budget when you have just $50 million. Um, so it all starts with prep, you know, and also build a team because, you know, that's the difference between old Nollywood and I, when I say old Nollywood is when I am talking about when we first started. You understand? When we first started, there was more teamwork. If you have a script, you could call a script conference in your house and everybody's going to add. And I always say to people that the stories then were richer than what we're getting now. The only thing you seem to have now is the, you know, the cameras, the technicals are getting better. But the stories are, for me, are not as strong as what we were previously having. So it's, it's kind of got to be a merge. And then there's also a need to understand that we need to still keep what we had before going. We need to keep building the stars. The way things have happened now, because there's just been a research, which we do always just before AMA, which is, who are people watching across the world in Africa, et cetera, et cetera. And we keep seeing the old names. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's always the old names. So that makes me worry as to what is happening with the new stars that we're building. Are we not doing what we did before? Are we not trying to make sure that people know this people? So if you're a filmmaker, realize that you need to build your audience and build who you're telling your story to. Get it right from the beginning. Know as a producer that right from the script stage to you doing the production and then the marketing and the lifetime of that film, you are attached to it. Don't look down on just putting your film on television as well. Mm -hmm. Don't look down on making sure that other African countries get to see those films after they've done their runs on Netflix or they've done their run. If it's not an original and you're just marketing and licensing it, make sure that you explore all the different levels of showing your film. And then I always tell Nigerian filmmakers now, producers, don't forget television. Mm -hmm. You know, don't. Just mm -hmm. realize that Streaming and data are still expensive all across the world, all, especially in Africa. I mean, there's some parts of Africa that $10 will not let you watch a Netflix film on data. So, right. but, but what about the cost of it still? So, so we've ticked all the boxes. I need to know these are the things I want to do, these are my parameters. But I still, it's not within my reach to you know, capture that budget. Uh, we've heard about film funds. 
not every producer is getting access to what the film funds are <laughs> or offering. So do we have, uh, do we, is there a need for more of those platforms? Okay, there are f the needs for platforms of film funding. Now, the, also the banks and CBN and everybody else that is trying to do funding for film you needs right. to understand how it really works. You know, you cannot keep putting parameters that the average filmmaker cannot afford to get. So basically, learn to understand collateral values of what is it that the filmmaker can provide. If a filmmaker comes to you with a story, then learn to say, this is what we can do. The filmmaker themselves also learn how to, must learn how to do um, project budgets that work. Mm -hmm. And then reputational advantages as well. Build your reputation, start small and accessing funds, build a relationship with your bankers where they can trust you, find a distributor that works with you, try and do pre-sales, work with um, brand placements and product placements in your film, and then begin to look at how you can actually reach out for money through other means than just, and then once you've got a story and you work it through, you might actually find that you already have the funds coming in. Product placement's a big area, and Nigerian brands have to start looking at how they can utilize this for their products as well. Banks and insurance companies and all that, they need to sit down with the association of movie producers and understand the ecosystem and the value chain of how to actually fund this industry and not listen to just voice pops or the people that make the most, most noise. You know, there is, there is um, an education that needs to be had by the bankers. The bankers seem to think that Nollywood is just some fancy place that people come, oh, I'm with the stars. No, it's work, it's a profession. It's profession, and therefore, if you understand the business, and if the government and everybody understands that the whole ecosystem of the creative industry and the employment value chain it brings to it, and the economic value chain it brings in, I think they will actually sit up and start to understand that putting time to understand the business of film and not the show of film, that they'll actually start to see uh, a return on investment. Right, very oh, great oh, okay, insights there. Okay, Madam Fis, let, let's spend the last one minute, yes. you know, because we are running out of time, uh, to speak on the 100 film project of AFA. I mean, the last time I heard about a 100 film project was with Shalafa Jobi's uh, next movie star thing, you know, trying to drive content. What are you up to with the 100 films? Um, actually, it's to show this value chain. Okay. Um, and you know, what I find is that I've trained a lot of young people across the globe over the last many years, but a lot of them don't have jobs after I've done the training. Mm -hmm. So what I find is that let's create the jobs. So as we train, we're gonna create you making films, and therefore you build your team. Because film is all about teamwork, it's all about collaboration. So the whole 100 Film Project is building teams across Africa that will make films that will show the full ecosystem of how to make a film properly. So from script to screen to sales. And follow it by also making sure they are fully registered as a company, as a production company, so that they see how, what it takes to become registered, to follow your taxes, to you know, have an accountant, and just be run as a professional body because everybody seems to think we've done it ad hoc. So going on to the next generation of filmmakers, I hope that you know, I can now begin to impact on that is that we build a professional ecosystem moving forward for Nigerian cinema and for African cinema. And that is really what the 100 Film Project is about. And that's why I'm happy that there is a team running the AMAs now so that I can actually go to something that I feel very passionate about, which is training the next generation of filmmakers and using what I've learned because you know, I am a child protege, and that's what people shouldn't forget. This was a journey for me. I've done this since I was nine years old, and so for me, I am passionate about the next generation, and if I didn't have people mentoring me, 
I wouldn't be where I am today. All right, very well said. Thank you great. so much for sharing those very great <laughs> insights with us, ma'am. Peace. I am Osigwe. Of course, we've been talking about the African movie industry. Thank you so much for joining us today.